This is us, two ordinary middle-aged blokes from England. And these are our two rather extraordinary little CRFs. Our plan is to ride the three and a half thousand mile round trip through France, Andorra and Spain to find this, the Tabernas Desert, located in the southern reaches of Spain. So join us as we showcase this amazing little motorcycle, meet new people, see new things and hunt out adventure, all in the search for the sand. Adventure. It's a funny word, really. See, everyone you speak to thinks about it differently. I don't think either of us, the lightweight adventurers, really know what it means, to us yet at least. So I guess the only way to find out is to get out there and actually do it. Get those wheels turning. Get those miles under the belt. But how do you even prepare for something when you don't know what's in front of you? I guess you don't, and maybe in part, that's the adventurous bit. Sometimes, you just need to pack your bike and go. So here we are, uh, just about to get onto the tunnel, just down here. Just been through passport control, and what time are we at the minute, mate? Five past ten. Five past ten, so plenty of time. Uh, we managed to get on an early train, so that gives an extra few hours from continental Europe. It's quite exciting, isn't it? It's really exciting. As a safety measure, please open some roofs or vents and keep your windows open halfway throughout the crossing. We would like to remind you that for safety reasons, flash photography and smoking are strictly forbidden on board. With that, free Europe awaited us. Until we needed fuel. A little pit stop, a bit to eat and a coffee. Hey, super excited as well, because over here they even sell croissants in France. So I'm well chuffed, because I always have that for breakfast, and I didn't think I'd be able to get one of those, but happy days. Who knew? So there's there's roughing it and there's roughing it, and we've just rocked up in this, oh, I don't know how to describe it. Ideal, picturesque, quaint little uh, French campsite and our new next door neighbour, lovely guy called Steve, I'll introduce you in a minute, has treated us to a bottle of uh, cider, so let's drink. So as I walk around the campsite with my bottle of cider, like um, I don't know whether I'm a baller. Or For absolute clarity, I don't really know what that word means or if I used it in the right context. So... Or, you know, like some rude boy with a, should have a brown paper bag over it anyway. I said I'd introduce Steve, but this is his bike and this is what he's ridden from. Oh, get it in camera, Mark. So this is a BSA D1, 125cc, two stroke. He's ridden it all the way from Andover and we're in middle of France, just north of Le Mans. So great to see old pieces of kit still getting used um, as they're meant to. Just like Jamie, really, now he's turned 43. I love that. Just to stop the noise from there. Uh... Because the wind coming up. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's not holding it on then? No, 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 it's just stop the wind. And they... Also, it's just some duct tape over there because it's, um, you get, um, like glare off. Are you a professional engineer then? Because this <laughs> looks like pretty high tech stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's, it belonged to a young, a uh, uh, ninety-year-old gentleman in the village who had it for fifty years. Jerry Hansen. He's quite well known in our town, and um, I used to watch him ride on it. So don't sell it to anybody else. Just sell it to me. So uh, he remembered that and sold it. Yeah, going down to Le Mans on it. Yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, I, I got some breakdown cover on the ferry, made sure I got some. So I've got <laughs> five days cover. I'm no engineer, I'm no mechanic, I've got no tools, I refuse to carry tools, because I wouldn't know what to do with them if I had them. So that's why, that keeps it lightweight, that's it? why the mirrors are like this, you know. 
Uh, well, we might be able to fix that for you with our well, tools. Well, that's part of the adventure because somebody will fix it. <laughs> I've come, I've, you allow yourself a few luxuries. One of them is a power pack, which I've forgotten the cable, so, um, so it's useless. But so it weighs so like half a one, kilo. Your one luxury yeah, I'm gonna you go can't use. To, I'm going to have to look today for a, for a cable. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna, how far I'm going to get today, but doesn't really matter because that's when the adventure starts when you get a flat tire or your thing blows up or yeah you know that's when the crash starts you know that's when you have to go and find somebody yeah, or push it or hitchhike or so what made you wake up and go i'm going to ride to le mans well, just because you've been before or you just no i just had to get i had to get out of the country really um <laughs> <laughs> i love the fact that i'm fixing bsa bantam you're in your happy place, Mark. If only if it is a mirror, but I'm fixing a bantam. It is a bantam. It's only, <laughs> it's only a mirror, but I'm fixing a bantam. And I love it. How was your night, man? Cold. <laughs> it was cold, wasn't it? It was cold. Three o'clock. Three o'clock, it got very cold. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know why I fooled myself that we can only be 200 miles south of England. And I thought to myself, no, it's nice and warm for a three-season sleeping bag and a pair of pants. Yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, because I'm also an idiot, I did the same thing. So we woke up this morning, we're both cold, we're still a bit tired, and we're relying on the little bit of sunshine that's starting to peek out now uh, to warm us up. That and coffee. Coffee. I mean... It don't let the sun fool you, it's still cold. I'm sat here in shorts and flip-flops, cold. Because you're an idiot. Because I'm a clown and I think I'm on holiday. And last night we were on holiday, it was lovely last night. That doesn't mean it, I did yesterday evening, I mean. Drank cider in the sun, it was beautiful. And then woke up shivering, needing a wee. <laughs> Where are we, mate? I don't know. Uh, I think we're just south of Le Mans. Yeah, we were going to stop at Le Mans uh, last night. We decided not to, so we've trucked on down. A bit more fuel in the bikes. I couldn't tell you where we are. I mean, literally, I've looked at the sat nav, and it would just all—it would literally all be French to me. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> which is good because you speak a lot of French, don't you? We, oui, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like we're, you're on your adventure yet, or <coughs> how adventurous do you feel at the moment? No. Don't get me wrong, last night was lovely. Having a, I'm having a lovely time. Um, does it feel adventurous? No. How can it be adventure when you've got a guy with eggs on his car bonnet across there? Tell me, how can that be adventure? Because there's no danger, there's no... So is that, well, is that what it needs? Do you think that's what it is? I suppose that's the thing. What, what, at what point do you think you'll start to feel like you're on your adventure? When there's risk. If only I knew what was only a few days away. <laughs> right. I don't want risk. I'm very risk averse. But that's, I guess I yearn risk. I yearn a bit of danger, a bit of... Jeopardy. I don't know what the word is. I don't want to be in danger, but I guess I do. Met that guy last night, Steve. He's ridden all the way to UK, uh, ridden all the way to France on a 70-year-old BSA, and he's bought a power bank, which he didn't bring a lead for his phone. No tools, not a single tool. He booked breakdown cover on the ferry. He's adventuring, and he's in Le Mans. We're not adventuring because we've got all of this, and we're in Le Mans. That's the difference. So I suppose that was going to be the question. What, what is adventure, I suppose, in your eyes at least? Not. I don't know. I honestly, I, and maybe I don't know, and that's why I've never experienced it, because I don't know what I'm looking for. Still excited though? Yeah. Still hopeful that you're going to find the adventure? I think we will. I think we'll find an element of adventure. Another 160 k's, another petrol station. How are you feeling, man? Feeling better than I was before. I was frustrated before because I felt like we weren't moving. We've just clocked off 160 odd k. 
and that feels like progress. At the minute, it's just progress. That's all we need to see. We're not having fun, we're not playing, we just need to do. And that's where we differ slightly, because I don't mind stopping and having a little chill and stuff. He's itching to go. How's your body holding up? Amazing. Not for any particular reason other than I spent two days sat down. Right, tuck my pubes in. Yep, you heard that right. <laughs> there we go. The truth is, we've got another couple of full tanks of fuel, which will get us another 160, 180 kilometers. Yeah, at least. Before we fuel again. So two 16K to Bordeaux. That's one more tank, plus some. So after a quick leg stretch and a drink of water, we got back on the road for the final push of the day before having to endure what Bordeaux had to offer. Our strong desire to support the local economy encouraged us to sample the local produce late into the night as we discussed high level adventure topics. How are you feeling, man? Um, whiny. I'm tired, <laughs> mate. I'm tired. Jamie's just learnt how to put knee braces on. Yeah, I mean, how long have you owned them, mate? Long enough. And he's just learnt that the straps unclip. He was putting them on like, uh, like socks, I guess. Like slipping them over his feet. <laughs> so, the plan was to leave earlier, like half an hour ago. And we're still sat in the shade. But feeling so done in. So, if you ever go to Bordeaux, drink the Bordeaux. It's very, very nice. Don't drink two bottles each. Yeah, leave some for other people. <laughs> yeah. That's the rule. That's the Bordeaux rule. Oh, come on, life. Well, we eventually got our gear together and got back on the road. And it wasn't long before the magic of these little bikes started to make us feel good about life again. And with the Spanish border in our sights, we're almost back to normal. Just pulled over at the side of this road. <coughs> and we've realised that for a YouTube channel, we're not doing a lot of filming for YouTube. It's because we're just doing miles. But Jamie was saying that really we need to record that. That's part of the trip, you know. It's a bit of a dichotomy because filming takes time. And we've got a place that we want to be. But we also want to record it, so we're stopped. <laughs> it's the long and short of it. Now it's a bit windy here, but we were, uh, we're right bang in the middle of the Pyrenees and we've ridden here obviously all by road. And behind me there, you can uh, probably see mountain with snow on the top of it. And we're on our way to hunt down some sand and what we think is a true adventure. But the truth is, we kind of don't want to leave this place and we're just passing through it. So we're going to probably spend a few days here towards the back end, but it's so beautiful. Everywhere we look, with both of us, almost hit the side wall because we're too busy looking at the scenery and not concentrating on the road. But there's some incredible stuff here. So yeah, the Pyrenees, what a fantastic place. Oh, I think Mark might have broke something. What's going on, man? Not broken. Adjusting a clutch cable. I think it's stretched out. And I'm worried it's maybe stretched out a little bit too far. Is that because you've been doing some proper adventuring? <laughs> Fast gear changes on the motorway. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. Fixed. Maybe not the biggest of breakdowns. Uh, <laughs> That's that. <laughs> so two GoPros, several batteries and take three just to introduce you to some guys that we've just been chatting to that we're camped up near. Uh, and uh, hello everybody. Hello. we've just been looking at this, this tent was incredible. Yeah, it's heavy, not very practical tent for long hiking, but uh, for something like this on the campsite, 
Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Feels like you're sleeping in a spaceship. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. It's very good, yeah, very really good cool. Hand. And one of the things we found on this trip is that uh, the bikes tend to drag people across for a chat, and it's brilliant. You meet some amazing people, and we've had some really good conversations yeah, yeah. with all sorts of people just in the last three days. Hundred percent, yes. And, yeah, uh, you see, because it's a dirt bikes, you like, wow, they made it all the way here. You yeah. Know? <laughs> uh, it's really cool meeting people, that's half the reason we go and do these trips, you know? And uh, you're, you're a bit of a climber, you've been climbing some of the, the mountains around uh, here? Yes, yeah, I came here quite a few times climbing and it's a remarkable place to climb. So awesome. When you change your sport from motorbiking to climbing, that's a good adventure. Yeah, we'll give you a call. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're in a zoo cage a bit. <laughs> well, let's not do that then. <laughs> So we found this incredible bridge, chilled out for a bit of an evening, found ourselves. So how's it going from your perspective? Uh, um, the nervousness has gone now, a lot, a little bit. I'm always nervous to get over that first hurdle, which for us was the tunnel. Make sure we're there on time, with our passports, and the right paperwork, which incidentally is a pain in the ass. And then, uh, this is my first time riding abroad. Never done it before. Driven abroad, loads, in loads of places. Never ridden a, a motorbike abroad. And? Any different? Initially, no, it was exactly the same because I was on the left. <laughs> so, <laughs> And actually that since then has been fine. It's the whole like driving on the right, I quite like it, but it's remembering to do it. And I think the worst is gonna be when we come off trails. I am excited for the trails. That was kind of the big thing. That was the big push, wasn't it? You know, the initially it was gonna be Morocco, wasn't it? And then due to ferry complications and time issues, we weren't sure if that, that would be a thing, so we needed a desert. We wanted something that felt that felt rugged, and I think the trails here are going to give us that. But I'm really hoping that a lot of it's nice gravel tracks, and we can just enjoy enjoy them. To be honest, I'm excited to get on a trail tomorrow and um, see how the bags fare up, see how the bike fares up. Yeah, not really tested it. We, well, we take it for granted. We've pointed it south revved it eight or nine thousand rpm constantly for hours on end for three days now for a thousand miles in and the bikes neither of them has uh, uh, have given one little grumble have they yeah tightening my clutch wear and tear tighten your clutch and we've both flattened off our tires a bit i think they're scrubbed in <laughs> or at least the center bits are trails earlier today and uh, they are pretty idyllic so the adventure level has stepped up a notch hasn't it it really has yeah it's um, well we haven't seen anybody for the last 45 minutes is what we've done we've rode solidly on this sort of stuff and it's been amazing yeah. so it feels perfect um, so this is pretty cool so yeah, uh, we're going to blast along here for another 30 minutes or so, see where we are, and then it's wild camp tonight, which I'm not entirely sure how I feel about, because we've seen wild dogs whilst we're trailing. <laughs> and as much as I love dogs. Mm. So, I'm walking back up to see Jamie, but what I didn't stop to do is film me picking my bike up exactly where Jamie is, because... Because difficult. So this... YouTube never shows how steep and technical these things are. They always look, nah. 
this is probably one of the steepest, gnarliest things we've done, especially for a long time. We're just two normal blokes. And we have given up before the bikes have, definitely, yeah. on this occasion. The, uh, I've never had to stop, turn my engine off, and walk my bike down a hill, just feathering the clutch to keep it from rolling down the hill. Yeah, that was something else. And you know what? That's where we are now. So really our options are to get down here. <laughs> yeah, our option is all go downhill. Our option is go down the hill or just go down the hill. Um, so I guess we go down the hill somehow. <laughs> Whether that's riding or walking, I don't know. Behind me, Jamie's just down there, look. Hopefully you can see him. Uh, and he's just giving me a shout that something's flown off my bike. And I've just looked and it was my tool tube that used to be right here. So I think a massive stone's taken my tool tube off. Right, it hit. Try and find the point at which you hit it on the trail because there was a big rock that turned over. I think this was the hammer right here because it's been ripped out. Yeah. I think that's what's done the damage, which means it's from here, that area. Look at that hole. Holy crap. So... What are you cooking us up, man? Everything. Got some bit of rice, a bit of uh, lentils, got some proper Spanish Things. Chickpeas, and then because we're well Spanish, we've got a quick paella. <laughs> All of that is going to get wrapped in some bread. So this is our wild camping spot for the night. Let me spin you around. I'm a very happy person. A little bubbling brook. So you can probably see nobody around us. <laughs> so I'm a bit weird with wild camping. I don't mind admitting it. I, I like, I like the idea of it. I like the romanticism of it not weird um, I don't like the thought of the security of it it weirds me out there's no way around it so we've ridden to the middle of a place and there's nobody around I don't think there's going to be anybody even thinks about coming up here Getting dinner on um, and we can hear thunder rolling in the background so grand <laughs> all told quite the day Any idea how this works? Who's your daddy chef getting going on here now with cheapy salt and pepper I could find in the supermarket? So you want to want to fry off the chickpeas for a few minutes just to sort of soften them up, heat them through really. Good pinch of salt, good pinch of pepper. Once that's cooked through, you really need to keep, be careful because you just bang everything else in and stir it around till it's all up. <laughs> Once that's all done, you wrap it in some bread, because we're British, um, and then you shove it in your face. We've been marking this map as we go, so I'll show you our progress. So, day one we got down to Le Mans, and we got boozed up with this guy called Steve Burbridge um, on his BSA, you've seen him in already in the film. And then we trucked on down to day two, and uh, got boozed up in Bordeaux, because they sell wine. And we met some people called bartenders. And then we, then we met the bartenders. And so then we came down here um, over the Pyrenees and into well, just just south of Yaka. And uh, we didn't get boozed up. We just drank beer. But we did have beers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is this is like the first proper wilderness night of the entire adventure. I mean no bars around here. Super, super, super excited. So it feels very, very different. So here's the things that we're finding out. One, Spain's not always hot. And two, it's not always sunny. So we decided to get up early this morning. Um, 
and by early we thought six o'clock would be a good start to try and get on the road because we want to truck south to the uh, to the Tabaras Desert and we're just going to kind of cover some distance. Um, yeah, it's six o'clock and it's still absolutely pitch black. I mean, yeah, you can see the moon behind me. Uh, it's dark and it's cold, but we're going to get moving and uh, hopefully be on the road by about half past seven. That's the plan. So, yeah. Spain gets dark and cold. Right, well it's the morning after the night before and uh, well, we survived, which is good. Nothing came for us, nothing stole our motorcycles, of course, that was never gonna happen. Uh, so all told, a successful camp, actually quite enjoyed it. Slept like a log, it was dark, it was quiet, uh, yeah, actually really quite nice. What was nice is this morning waking up and the sun was peeking over that mountain there. Um, it was cold until the sun came up and then the sun just hit. It's like, oh, that's, that's pleasant. So we're packing bikes up, a bit of carnage at the minute. And it's hitting the road down to Albacete, which is where we're gonna do a few days of desert trails. Can't wait. things going on now so we had it yesterday or the other day Mark's um, one of his rock straps came loose and started to get pretty close to his axle and actually it happened on both sides and we've got it it's just started doing it again uh, so we're just fixing that we've also got all sorts of comms problems going on at the moment yeah so we're gonna try and fix that later on how you doing man where's it going man let's go then Yeah, adventures don't always go to plan, apparently. But, thank the Lord for supermarkets and a little bit of uh, supermarket shelter because it's absolutely hammering it down at the moment. We're in almost what you could probably call southern Spain. And um, it's lovely and warm, but absolutely torrential rain. So, we're going to wait for that to stop and then. Then hit up some trails. The director of the weather, Mark. I think it's hideous. And I'm not riding out in this. <laughs> Bit under a bloody sun shelter at Little or Aldi, whichever it is. Because I don't want to get absolutely stinking wet. Yeah. <laughs> And when it finally looked like the rain had stopped and it was safe for us to get back on the road, we were wrong. absolute atrocious downpour and thunderous hail and literally that was five minutes ago and it now it's this the the hails were so strong my forearms are battered i mean you can see how wet my gloves are i can wring them out um yeah in fact yeah Ugh. 
Come to Spain, they said. Enjoy the sun, sunny, dusty trails, they said. Haven't seen a single bit of dust yet. <laughs> well, the, fact be... is, the fact is, the sun is blazing now, and I suspect we'll be dry in 15, 20 minutes. This should be called the search for the dust, because I'm not sure it exists. <laughs> Hunt for the desert. Not seen. <laughs> so we set off, dried out and warmed up a little, enjoying the incredible trails that Spain had to offer. But what we were about to happen upon was even more idyllic. So, just looking which day we're on, day number three, sure. five, some. Jamie's cooking our dinner. Definitely not eating chocolate peanuts. Definitely not eating chocolate peanuts. So we're starting to enjoy the roads as much as the off-roads, which is a weird thing to say. But the off-roads, we noted today, we don't really see any culture. We don't see any people, of course, that's half the reason. We see a lot of trails a lot of wildlife which is amazing um i don't see any people so we we start to go a bit on the roads and a bit on the trails each day and we're really enjoying that we're starting to enjoy the literal dual sportness of the crf but we're on the trail now and uh we're actually in albacete at the minute so we've we've trucked down we were going to do a lot of trails on the way down but we've trucked down and we've decided that we're going to have a southbound leg to get to the desert and then a bit of a northbound leg because we've been hunting, I've certainly been hunting the desert as I want for adventure and life. And uh, I think we might be close to finding it. It doesn't look very deserty here, but we are actually on the very peripheries of one, I think. So yeah, the adventure is ramping up. We're in the middle of a desert, but we are by farmland. So I don't know if it feels completely isolated, but I'm starting to enjoy the mix of the being around people, being in a different environment. Yeah, it'd be nice if we met a few people, wouldn't it? Adventuring's brilliant, and it really is, but it feels like you're just riding trails and doing off-road in a different place. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing, I mean. But yeah, you don't get to experience the culture quite as much as I kind of expected us to, I suppose. But that's part of that's part of what happens when you want to be wild and nowhere near anybody. You can't experience the local people if you purposely try not to be anywhere near them. Yeah. It's a dichotomy, isn't it? So I, think, a... I think certainly I'm starting to reassess the word adventure. Mm. Slowly, adventure in my mind before I set off was hitting trails hard, going over mountains, being in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, done that now. And what I've realized is that's no different to UK. We can do that in UK. Ironically, if we're on a big adventure in the Middle East, so I'd want to be invited into a Bedouin camp and actually meeting the people, and that would then be the adventure. I'd class that as the adventure yeah. rather than just riding over the sand. We've met some really wicked people, actually. We're really enjoying that. So I hope we do that a lot more. So yeah, starting to slowly reassess what, what actually I think we were looking for. It's funny because whenever we stop around people, they come over to speak to us because of the bikes. When we're on the trail, we don't see anybody, so nobody comes over. And if we were to see somebody, well, there'd probably be another tether. So why would they come over and speak about our bikes? Yeah. Particular? And we haven't even seen any other tethers. No, we've not seen anybody. Um, that's a really good point, actually. Th these bikes, they, they, are, they are definitely that uh, underdog. Mark and I have been chatting about this. They're definitely that underdog that Everyone can dismiss, they're quite vanilla in essence, um, but what they do is they attract a lot of attention. And I actually think they attract more attention than maybe a big adventure bike or... I think a lot of people would expect to see a KTM 890, a Super Adventure, a 10 Air something. And they'd go, well, where'd you come from? England? Yeah, cool. Oh, well, of course you did, you got an adventure bike. A few people look at those things and go, oh, where'd you come from? England. You rode all the way through France. You mental. That's a typical reaction yeah. and I love it. 
and that, that actually we were chatting to uh, Oleg and Emma the other day at the campsite and that's what, what Emma said. Uh, she said that's probably the most amazing part about it, the fact that you've done all that distance in four days on those bikes and you know, love them or hate them, what they've done is they've trucked on down south, they've not they've not stuttered at all have they <laughs> not one bit six seven eight thousand rpm for hours and hours on end and then turn them right off the road and carry on there's an old saying in the military no plan survives first contact with the enemy which basically means you have to remain flexible assess the situation around you and be open to change if required so far we made change on a daily basis reacting to the circumstances we found ourselves in Today was to be no different. We had a new plan with a new destination and we are fast learning that things may not always go to the original plan but sometimes the new one works out pretty well. We are just outside of Albrox in a little town called Lubrin, um, but more uh, specifically, Jamie's dad's house. <laughs> yeah, my dad's house, right in southern Spain. The plan was to come here, but not today. Yeah. But today got wet and cold. It seems like we're lying, because every time we talk to you, it's blazing sunshine, um, um, but it got cold, didn't it? We would planned to be here two days later. We were going to pop into the desert today, wild camp for a couple of nights, but truth be told, we had all the weather, rain, cloud, cold, it got down to like three or four degrees, whatever. We, we were shivering cold. Um, so we made a decision, we had a chat and reassessed, and we're fast learning that that's a big thing. That's yeah. a big thing when you're out about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, flexibility, just doing what you want with adventure. Adventure doesn't have to be the surviving. It doesn't have to be endurance. It can just be seeing a thing. And if it means we see the desert tomorrow, which is our plan, um, then we wait a day. Guess where we are? Found a desert. Found a desert. In a canyon. And uh, yeah, look at it. We've just been exploring around this bit. We've had to just stop because, well, that's as high as the bike. So even Unless... the mighty CRF might struggle with that. So we're just busy taking it all in, if I'm quite honest. Just, it's, it's quite hard to take it all in. It's, we're literally in the canyon of a desert. We just took a turn, road, and come to a point where we can't go any further. So we've got to turn around and go back in a minute. But, um, Two CRFs all the way from Lincoln have driven down the 1500 miles and have just pulled us, our sorry asses, through a desert. And the only thing that stopped them is a drop off as high as they are. Definitely found all kinds of deserts. Well, I found this one anyway. This is incredible. And you can almost echo. I hope you picked it up. That was ace. <laughs> it's pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> this is super cool. So this is just the entrance. We literally just started into it now, and uh, I can't wait to see what's around that bend. Yeah. You see where we've just ridden from that tiny little. You see a brick wall, maybe, um, like a gravel path just down there and it's just kicked us out into this amazing canyon which I love, I want to almost just stop here, I've, I've peaked, I'm in the, I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the desert you know, and I kind of want to just experience it and it's just something else. 
whilst we're at it, let's give some credit to to these little things, you know. These little bikes have come all the way from Lincoln in the middle of the UK. And uh, now they're stuck in a canyon in the desert. So, uh, yeah, I hope you can take in the grandeur of this place with me. It's just coming, so we decided to drive south a bit. Uh, we were going through some, well it was desert, but it wasn't the sort of desert we wanted. So we've come down, and this is the entrance. What we found is that one, sand is hard to ride on. This is very loose on the floor here. We've got these two little beasts that still haven't put a foot wrong and seem to also love sand. They seem to be able to ride on pretty much anything. So, it just seems to be getting better and better. And the idea of camping around here, it's kind of the dream, isn't it? Uh, honestly, it's, it's everything that I've ever wanted from a campsite, I think. So if we go around the corner and it doesn't quite match up to this, then this is exactly where we'll come back to and we'll pitch a tent and we'll take some photos and I'll pop a drone up and we'll fly it down the canyon. And, <laughs> and you know what? For all this is amazing, the one thing that's uh, that's really astounding is one, the bikes. The bikes have got here, they're, they're just incredible, they haven't put a foot wrong, but doing it with your best mate as well, to experience this together, to experience it on your own would be cool, but yeah, be something. actually, yeah, we've come here on out, this is our first big trip, and, uh, and here we are. Desert Canyon, you know? And how cool is that? Two, two dudes. Two, two dudes. normal dudes. Two normal middle-aged dudes. Normal middle-aged fellas. That was basically mental. Uh, Mark's just headed off to go and have a look what it's like around the next corner. But it basically looks like we're just riding up a, up a river. Um, and that was pretty hard work. So we're both sweating like mad. Um, and now we've got to decide if we carry on up that way or turn around. Just walked up this. Well, we rode up a river, I fell off and then it's got really rocky so we've just walking it now to see if we can go any further or if we just need to spin it around go back to somewhat civilization a few miles ago quite a few miles ago but oh i didn't put my steering lock on <laughs> yeah so this is what this is it's as you can imagine in a desert red hot oh that's a path here yeah. or a is it an intentional path no, so it goes to know it's just a shaly bit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this just goes on and on and on. That's the wilderness. Yeah. I'll tell you now, can't see any other tracks. No, 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 we are, nobody has been up here either at all or in an incredibly long time because this is just a, some mountain water flowing off you can see that obviously yeah and you know what we're the lightweight adventurers not gnarly go into a desert and try to die adventurers and uh, we're already a good shot away from any civilization we've ridden up this quite tricky river area I guess the question is not not can we I think we can should we uh, like this bit doesn't look as bad as the bit we've just done. I don't think. Do you? No, no I agree. That bit does. <laughs> yeah, that bit does. Probably get that looks 
pretty much exactly what we've just ridden. Looks like it opens out over there, look. So, I think I'll vote press. I think. We've walked it. We can definitely get onto this. This we can ride easy. The bikes will prove that they can take it because they've just pulled that bit. It seems at this point, Jamie had made up his mind. And well, who am I to disagree? Okay, so ultimate decision is uh, we've decided to press on a little bit. Just repositioned the bikes. Jamie sat in a river. Utterly sweltering. And we've got more river to ride, so. Let's hope we've made the right decision, eh? Well. If you ever see this video, we've made the right decision because I've got back to England and I've edited it. And uh, I think after this we'll change our name to the Heavyweight Adventurers because this is mental and gnarly and way past what we planned. Yeah, there is no... We, we are far off the beaten track. This is not laid out on any map, track, app, thing. We've followed a river. You can find this. Look for a big canyon with a river in it in southern Spain. That's not real. And so that's what we've done. So, let's watch Jamie ride down this first bit. Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't want to do it. Come on. So a bit further along, we've got Mark. Uh, his bike stuck to the point where it's just stood on its own in a river so this doesn't look that gnarly just here but rest assured it is it's mental it is for us anyway two things just happened first thing take a look at me eye there whoa so i had my sunnies down my lid open like this and a stick go under look how close it is to my eye so nearly lost an eyeball literally by a few millimeters um, so from here point inwards, visor down all the while and then came around this corner, avoided this rock here with my front wheel and uh, yeah just stuck so now it's not quite stood up on its own but it won't traction out by itself. So we're gonna have to try and get it moved but luckily there are two of us and that's what we like. with a great deal of fortune, just after the river, the sand in front of us levelled out. It had been a really crazy day and we were shattered. Our eyes fixated on the hills in front of us and we decided to find a campsite. And what a campsite we found. There's a casualty of war, a little bit of fairing. To be fair, that's where the tool tube blew off somewhere in northern Spain and it's just a little bit around it. So uh, that's how much we care for our bikes. And I love it. it. It doesn't thank me for it, but it doesn't hate me for it either. So I'll tuck that on. 
and that will become an ornament of some sort. What's going on here then? It's a relatively new helmet, but the, the top of the padding started to start to compress and start to bed in, and I started to get a bit of pressure on my ear. So I came up with a fix, and that well, this made Mark laugh for some reason. But I stuffed a glove on the inside of, uh, of my helmet, just on the, the top of the lining. But I think a more permanent fix might be put, to put some different padding in, some different foam. So that's, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to put that in so that let the helmet sit a little bit higher and take that bit of pressure off my ears. And, uh, and that's it really. So that's what I'm doing. See? On the road fixes. I did think the glove was very funny with the glove just sat on his head and then his brand new 300 quid helmet on top of that. But uh, yeah, he's got some pads at home so it'll be sorted properly but at the minute it's a glove and then a bit of foam from his dad's work shed because we're 1,500 miles from the actual pads. In the outside workshop, here we are. Putting foam in a helmet. Sure thing. It's just so funny having this glove sat across his head. It wasn't the comfiest, I'll be honest. I mean, it's not stupid if it works, right? But... <laughs> Now that I don't have the tool tube there, the bag was sitting on the tool tube to an extent, you know, it wasn't taking much weight. Tool tube flew off with a boulder, as we showed you. So then the bag started to rotate slightly. So what we've got is just a piece of square bracketry that Jamie's dad has given us. Yeah, just fashioning a bracket now to sit down here, all professional and stuff, to then take the bag. Uh, yeah. I'm, Quite excited to see how this works. I think it will really take the strain of the bike and the bag and be much stronger than all of the other was. I think that's fair to say. And that is a fix. And I love it. I love it because it'll take the bike. Yeah, it'll take the bag, sorry. And I could just whip that off when I get home. And uh, now that all this fairing's removed, because I broke some of it in the desert, you remember, I quite like the back end of the rally without all of this bulk. I think it looks pretty cool. <laughs> God, the way it's just sat on a log. Oh. Oh, I don't think. That's going nowhere, is it? Right. This is the international debut of the lightweight skiffle band. Jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds is a hard card to find. When you play the game of life, you got the money, you got the stripes. Jack of diamonds is a hard card to find. Life is like a game of cards, very, very hard. Jack of diamonds is a hard card to find. Jack and diamonds, Jack and diamonds, diamonds is a hard card to find. Jack and diamonds, Jack and diamonds, diamonds is a hard card to find. Had a girl who won my heart, and that the money is made of heart. Jack and diamonds is a hard card to find. Get a life just to bet. But I've never won it yet Jack of Diamonds is a hard card to find Jack of Diamonds Jack of Diamonds Diamonds is a hard card to find Jack of Diamonds is a hard card to find. Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, Diamonds is a hard card to find. Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, Diamonds is a hard card to find. I said Diamonds is a hard card Gap, Gap, 
couldn't be mine From a humble guy Well, Cumberland Gap ain't nowhere Fifteen miles from Middleburg Cumberland Gap ain't nowhere Fifteen miles from Middleburg Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap Fifteen miles from Cumberland Gap Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap Fifteen miles From Cumberland Gap Well, I got a woman six feet tall Sleeps in the kitchen with the legs in the hall. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. Well, a dollar is a dollar. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 50 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 50 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 50 miles. From Cumberland Gap. Yeah. Whoa. Thank you very much. Here we are then, about to start the long leg home. This leg is Jamie's leg. You know, we sort of ventured down the way and uh, we hit the desert, called Donuts in the Desert. And I'm not entirely sure if we hit the truest sense of adventure. So I've handed over the race to Jamie. Jamie's got a very different way of adventure. We're gonna still hit plenty of trails. That's gonna be a thing. Yeah, it's going to be the long trek north. Morning. We're in Andorra. It's chilly. And now I need to get out the uh, comfort and warmth of my sleeping bag. Hey man. How you hey. doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm cold. You don't want to open up and say hello? No, I don't. I'm cold. Well, it looks beautiful up out there. It doesn't look like Mark's going to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see the beauty in a minute. driving down and I saw a bit of strap on the floor and I said to Jim, oh, I think I can see a strap coming from your knee. Don't worry, it's just one of your front pouches. And then he did a bit of an emergency stop and went, oh no, that's, uh, that's my rucksack dangling by my front axle. So, man, it's tricky. These little things just catch out, don't they? So many other things on your mind. So in the calf, I pull my bag in a different place. I decided just to hook it over the indicator. I left it there while I went in for breakfast. I normally put it on the handlebar, so I know where it is. Got a bike, completely forgot. It's dangled down on the side whilst I come down the main road. Dangerous, don't do that. I'm on the straps, it's flat back onto the exhaust, and now I've just got melted plastic stuff all over my exhaust down there. So that was stupid.
think this is where we uh, turn around. You guys have been a long way. <laughs> we have. Very long way. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're getting through there. Yeah, I think as Gandalf says, thou shalt not pass. Yeah, what a shame. Oh well, that's Andorra and that's the Pyrenees Mountains with uncleared snow roads, so turn around. Got a bit of snow to ride back through because we managed to get past this snow drift. And that was well sketchy. We're gonna have to do that again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Got to part of the adventure this has turned out to be. Uh, Jamie's got full control, I feel pretty good about that to be honest. I'm just sitting back and enjoying it and uh, yeah so far it's delivering. We have ridden a bit of Andorran Tet today so on the trails. Uh, that was pretty perfect if I'm quite honest. Um, yeah a bit of gravel track and then up into the mountains <coughs> and uh, got, couldn't pass the mountain pass because of the snow. So we had to turn back and go right the way through Andorra again, which isn't very far of course, but yeah, double back on ourselves and then we just did a bit of a road up the way. But uh, one thing I've, I've started to realise is we're the lightweight adventurers, we're two middle-aged blokes, and, I, and as much as I can adventure in a desert, camp in a desert on a hilltop and do all the stuff, live off the bike for a few days as we did before, actually I think I, I prefer to do what we're doing tonight, you know, and that's staying in a blisteringly hot campsite in the middle of France with a church or a thing behind us um, which tolls its bell every quarter an hour and a nice bottle of red and I know that might sound a bit soft but we are the lightweight adventurers after all you know might seem a bit holiday-esque quite frankly I don't care I'm loving it and uh, yeah maybe that's what a lightweight adventure is all about maybe, I think that's maybe what all of us really want in, in a, some way, rather than roughing it in the dust and the dirt, we can all do that. You know, this is much nicer and much comfier. Certainly this is what I prefer. Good morning everyone. Beautiful day in south of France. The birds are tweeting behind us. The church bells have been tolling and the uh, sun is beaming down on my face. The world couldn't be more perfect. Isn't that the case, mate? Yeah, absolutely. It's perfectly quiet. You can't even hear the sound of a motorbike engine. Not one. Not one. Well, you'd probably hear one if I started mine. Yeah, you could hear one. You'd probably hear one. But you definitely wouldn't hear this one. Why is that, mate? Uh, I've made some very good decisions in my life. Um, one of them wasn't putting a new battery on this before I came away, which is one of those lithium ones. And it's not served me quite as well as I thought uh, because I've got a flat battery. Yeah, so we rocked up last night and we were giddy with excitement to get the tents up in the sun get a bottle of that beautiful wine. And uh, Jamie unfortunately forgot to unplug his phone in his battery bank that was charging. Yeah, so, not an awful lot of stuff plugged in, like just a couple of bits. But 10 minutes was enough to kill a little lithium battery. So, whereas I think a standard one might have taken it, the lithium one hasn't. So nonetheless, we've come to the bike this morning uh, and it is dead. That's dead. But we're very fortunate because just at the top of the reception there is a mild hill, so uh, yeah, best we get pushing and bump starting. As easy as that. Yes, you just turn this off. <laughs> First time, actually brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you've never done one before. That was either second or third, no way of knowing because I had no dials, so 
but didn't know when it went through, but we'll leave that chugging and we'll get the rest of the cab packed up and then we'll ride and it'll be just dandy. Just fine. For now. <laughs> Turns out, the French Tet is rather lovely. I'll uh, just interrupt. Remember this spot in about two minutes time. Okay, let's get on. Beautiful French Tet just here. See the uh, amazing CRF behind me. Jamie's just um, taking a photo of his bike. He's trying to learn a bit of photography and why not? There's no better setting. So we're uh, taking a few photos for the shoot and ride. We'll try to get a few of those. And we'll post them up on Facebook. We found this. Pretty cool. Don't know what it was, what make and model, but it's pretty cool. CRF's just chilling out on a beautifully quaint French street. Jamie's enjoying a second pan of shot, third pan of, how many is that, four? It's the first one of the rad. Four pan of chocolat in the last 20 minutes. Um, absolutely stunning. The, the tet so far has been quite pleasant to us actually. Um, some sweeping meadows, wet grass, but c'est la vie, French. And um, yeah, then we hit a logging truck bit, is it? gnarled up and chewy so I think we're going to hop north for 10-15 clicks on the road beautifully laid out B roads we'd call them to Calus which is on the French for National Park and that's where we're going to hop back on the Tet do another 20-30 clicks up we've done 30 clicks or so on the French Tet already and go through the French French Park mm -hmm. you call that to me as soon as I've taken a bike on purpose life really was treating us well as they say in France Everything was going tray bomb. We've got a bit of a problem, haven't we? Oh, merde. We have. Just checked my bag over as I was putting my coat on the top and my tent poles are AWOL. Yeah, so we normally sit sits them just here. Just in the back here, right in the tucked away. And there, not there. Remember this fast bit? Well, that's where tent poles like to hang out, apparently. So that's it. So we're going to go and Double back, have a look at some tech, and then we'll make a decision at some point whether we have to dive in to try and find some sort of camping shop and buy a new tent. And that's that. So, that yeah, that. pretty pretty bad place to be at the moment. We've got we've got directions to go, and that's not a problem. But the main thing is we've got we've got no sleep system for Mark, and that needs to happen. So, uh, I'm afraid that's where we're going. Let's go and have a look at some tents. Back here already, but we'd already checked out the photos and seen the tent poles had not made a cameo in said photos. So onwards and upwards. Well, I've lost my tent poles, but these ones will do me. I hope they fit. What a clown. Uh, yeah, feel pretty stupid for having lost them in all honesty, but they don't quite fit in my bag. Um, they might now. Well, maybe they will, but maybe they'll be just more securely strapped to the top. I don't know. Uh, we've only tracked back, what, 10k, if that? Yeah, not much. Luckily, yeah, but we we deducted that this bit of track, but actually this bit of track that we're on now, right at the end of probably a good five or six k's worth yeah. of fast. fast gravelly stuff. Luckily, what we did is we'd stopped to take a few photos and we could look back at those photos, zoom in and go, right, they weren't there, but were they back at the last photos? Uh, you know, and sort of deduce, right, it's probably in between these bits and... Could have been a lot worse. We could have been spending another 50 quid or whatever to get a cheap tent, plus, like you say, be a hundred and odd quid's worth of tent down. Yeah, it's not a cheap tent, you know, so I'm, I'm pleased that we've managed to recover it. Or, worse than that, we could have been wild camping later and pulled up at eight o'clock tonight and then gone. And as Jamie said on the intercom, the solution at that point would have been us two in his 1.2 person tent with the kit outside. 
which is all right for Mark, but imagine how I would feel about that. That would have been all sorts of weird. Anyway, I was kicking myself, I was sort of cursing myself, but I'm relieved I found them. What a clown. Right. We'd have needed a lot of wine if we were going to both share my tent. I'm going to take a few minutes and see how I get these fitted to the bike properly. Let's do that. So it just, just goes to show these things happen. And uh, on the intercom for the last however long we've been riding, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, no one's going to beat you up more than you beat yourself up. And Mark was in a bad place, like uh, annoyed at himself. But you know what? Adventures throw these sort of things up at you. That's ultimately, that's ultimately what we're finding out. You know, you have a problem to overcome. That's not in the grand scheme of things. That's not the worst problem in the world. You know, we could have just gone and bought a new tent, and that would have solved the issue. Both bikes are still running brilliantly, uh, and we're both still fit and healthy. No big offs or anything like that to worry about. So, life's pretty good. If the only thing we can do is lose a set of tent poles, I think we're okay. With the tent poles in hand, we were en route to the campsite. If Carlsberg did adventures... Super they do. It's a Belgian beer. We're in the heartland of France. It's nice. Yeah, we should have asked some of the French, like Foster's or something, shouldn't we? Yeah. Guinness. It's very nice, this place. It's a medieval city, if you can see that side. I don't know if you can. Circular thing with the castly church thing in the background. Some things going on, it's very nice. And do you know what? We've been saying we want to enjoy a bit of French culture and I feel like we are. We're in a very French town, next to a very French river, drink some very not French beer. But that's usually what the French do, so that's quite French, isn't it? Very nice. And this is our view. Nothing says France more than Imotec estate agents. Having jumped off the road and back onto the trails, the French Tet was providing some of the best easy going trails Jamie and I had ever, ever ridden. Right, check this out. Tet France, just, I guess, north of Limoges, somewhere around there, Limoges. Don't know how it's pronounced, Limoges, I think. And uh, we bend over, we'll have a look at that. Look at that. Jamie's just over there, right beside it. And uh, I can't even get it all in frame. It's terrifying standing right next to one. Don't know why, they're just so big. But if I go quiet, I wonder if you can hear it. it's like breathing. You can probably hear a little CRF in the background because cheers, Jamie. But yeah, listen to that. Incredible. So, yeah, absolutely enormous, but mid France, you're incredible. Right, it's making angry noises. I mean, I think we're allowed to be around here. The track comes literally where the bikes are there. So I don't feel like we're doing any trespassing, but it's making angry noises. We're making a brave retreat. <laughs> We're only a couple of K from the Tet and uh, Jamie's just saying we're gonna jump on the Tet for some distance this afternoon. Sounds pretty cool. Nice and early, it's only two o'clock. So enjoy some time. French German pretzels. Yeah, all good. And some French <coughs> American Coke. And then we're gonna eat some French fish and chips. All together lovely. Yeah. And then hop on a bit of Tet. So looking forward to that. Mm. A 
arrived in our campsite. Whereabouts are we? Whereabouts? Uh, fear, fear's on, fear fear's on. Anyway, just looking over the bike. Uh, fortunately today, my admin's been considerably better and I've got everything that I departed with. Absolutely everything. Because I was a bit of a loser yesterday. And um, yeah, stuff fell out and got lost. Uh, just about to start having a look over Jamie's. Uh, oh, mate, that looks squidgy. Oh yeah, I've emptied that, mate, yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah, just, um, that, yeah, that was just, it was a bit heavy on the back, you know, so big silver canister with water and that. You place it down anywhere? Yep, yep, yep. Any idea where? Yep, I know exactly where I'll put it. Right. So, but, yeah, you see, um, you see the railways around here get used quite a lot, and the railway train drivers, yeah, they have to stop and hydrate every now and again and keep themselves cool, so I, I thought it very, very nice of me to just stow donate stow a bit of water for them donate it to the uh, the train you know train drivers you know those truckers keep in france going and um yeah i just uh i put it put it down as we went past lightweight adventurers get their name by just simply shedding weight during adventures it's for no other reason we just we take some weight we get rid of weight so i've got rid of a softy jacket and um oh, you got rid of tent poles for got a rid of tent poles for a little bit have I lost anything else? No, you lost various things, but we found them. Yeah, recovered them. We're keeping Senor Farmer warm down in Spain. Yeah, and, and we're Monsieur keeping... Train Driver hydrated I... in France. Yeah. And, um... So anyway, if there are any train drivers watching this and you see a nice silver water bottle, um, you're welcome. Feel free to post it back to us. <laughs> it's a good lesson in bag admin. <laughs> it is. But, and I had that lesson yesterday, and to be fair, a little drawstring. It's probably never going to keep a, a full water bottle closed over trails, but trails. it has been a good lesson to both of us to stow things 100%. And we've we've had buddy buddy checks after you know leaving bags on indicators and my straps yeah. by axles, and we, so now as we pulled out the campsite or wherever we stopped, we've, we've had a buddy buddy check. Yeah, we do one person rides in front of the other, have a quick check around the bike even after each of us have done our own individual checks so yeah i mean i'm gonna have to try and find something cylindrical to fill this with now i don't yeah. know what that could possibly what, what sort of things could you get there i don't like, know but i reckon the capacity is about 750 mil but there's got to be things in france that uh, that might fit that description surely so a good lesson a bit of fun and non-essential kit luckily but yeah, yeah. that's all part of it isn't it before long, we found ourselves in good old gay Paris. And initially, we were extremely cautious, as we didn't want to break any laws or rules. As it turns out, there are none. Just dodge the cars, hold on tight, open the throttle, and pray. Two minutes. 
Do, do me net. So we're getting told off by all sorts of officials here because we've just abandoned the bikes because of uh, that. But yeah, the lads behind us in the yellow and this lad across here, they don't seem overly happy. So we'll get a photo and then we'll bog off. Well, that's a bit mental. How are you uh, feeling after your Paris experience? Tres bon. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, put your wheel in direction. Hope that it's all right to go that way. Yeah, I think it's fair to say it's just a little bit mental. You find a gap. If you fit in it, you go. If you think you're fitting it, you go. And if you're not going to fit in it, go. It's just crazy. Oh, cafe. Oh, Ça ne fait rien, je vais vous pardonner. Pardon? Pardon? Je ne comprends pas. Vous êtes anglais? Parlez français un petit. Oui, mais vous parlez bien français. Voilà. Merci. He is our local interpreter. He's done a tres bon job. Progressively less bad as the trip's gone on. So we can, uh, between us, we can, we can gesture and say words, sort of. But yes, riding around Paris, honestly, probably one of the best things I've done on the bike yet, regardless of all the other stuff. It's put a massive smile on my face. I have no idea how many fines we've received, because I don't know how many red lights and wrong lanes we've gone down. But we basically parked the bikes up on a curb over there, because that's what bikers do, apparently. Sat next to the Moulin Rouge, and we're having a bit of food. And we're still here. I think it's uh, time to ride over towards the Tet and then we'll go north a little bit and then we'll figure out tonight's evening plan. So that's what we did. We jumped on the Tet, headed north and tried to find somewhere to stay for our penultimate night in France. We were quiet on the road today. Jamie and I don't get to hang out as often as we used to. And for two weeks we'd laughed at stupid stuff and done stupid stuff. And that was all coming to an end. A fact absolutely not lost on us. But the downer didn't last for long, because as soon as we hit the northern French Tet, we started smiling again. That's the English Channel right there, so we're pretty much as north as you can get on the Tet. There's a very little bit from here to Calais, 15, 20 clicks, something like that. So yeah, we're right at the top end of the French Tet. Oh, we just passed it, we just come off it. Really does signify the closure, doesn't it? Yeah, that's about it. The next shot hopefully will be sat in the Channel Tunnel on the, on the train. But uh, yeah, it's been great. France has been brilliant. This had been a really great two weeks. And as early as the channel on the way back, we'd start reflecting about the trip and laughing about all the stupid things that had happened. And after all that, we were back in UK with its endless miles of bollards and roadworks. But we knew the hard work was done and we could relax and put up our feet. Or could we? I don't know how that's happened. No idea. That's a flat tyre. We're uh, 30, 40 miles from home, give or take. Yeah, we just pulled off the A1 
35 miles from home or so. And Jamie says, oh, my front feels all weird. And uh, he's got a puncture. So five and a half thousand kilometers. He's waiting until he's 50k from home to get a puncture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna whack a bit of air in it and see if we can nurse it home. Because it's nine o'clock on a Saturday. We've just done two weeks of traveling. We don't know if we can be bothered to fix it just yet. Well, we'll see how this goes, won't we? So ain't this always the way? The last 60 clicks. And we get our first mechanical, if you want to call it that. I'm not sure a puncture is a mechanical, but yeah, man, what a lick. So we've got the offending article. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't, but it's right next to my thumb there. Tiniest little nicks right Ooh. opposite the valve. So maybe it just got a bit too low at one point. And I've hit a rock or something's happened and the valve's gone into the tube or something, but it's directly opposite the valve and um, it split it somehow. So just typical for it to go on the motorway. Why yeah. is it always my bike? <laughs> the two punctures between the two of us, both of them have been on my bike. One rear, one front, have got a full set. I don't know what that is. Bro. Love it. Right, let's get this buttoned up, come on. So the tyre's back on, but for whatever reason, the tyre won't hold pressure. Maybe we nipped a tube, or maybe the fix just didn't work. We, uh, we tried to replace the inner tube. Ugh, I think we bought an 18 inch rather than a 21. Can't entirely be sure, we're tired. But the, uh, we fixed it with a punch repair. It was right on the ridge line, right on a seal of the tube and we couldn't quite get a perfect seal. So that was a absolute nails job. So it's not held air perfectly, but it's held some. So we're gonna put some air in it and then nurse Jamie the 40 miles back. It is what it is, it's an adventure, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, well, it'll be interesting riding back like that. And ride it back like that, he did. I recently read an article that says when you've done a trip, you should unpack your bags alongside unpacking your memories. So whilst everything was washing, we reflected on the trip and what adventure really meant to us now. And what we realized is adventure is not a place, a person or a thing. It's an experience, it's a journey. And what a journey this was. When you play the game of life, you got money, you got stripes. Jack and diamonds is a hard car to find. Jack of Diamonds is a hard car to find. Sing along, boys. Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds. Diamonds is a hard car to find. Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds. Diamonds is a hard car to find. Had a girl who won my heart. I like the money that made her part. Jack of Diamonds is a hard Well, come on, Gap, ain't nowhere 15 miles 
the middle bird Cumberland Gap ain't nowhere for 15 miles from Middleburg. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. Well, I got a woman six feet tall, sleeps in the kitchen with her legs in the hall. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, fifteen miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, fifteen miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, fifteen miles from Cumberland Gap. About a dollar is a dollar, dime is a dime. I love you, honey, most all the time. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap. From Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 50 miles from Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 50 miles from Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 50 miles.